Substations come in all shapes and sizes, but wherever you go in the world, you will come across a standard substation configuration. These provide operational flexibility whilst allowing the equipment to be maintained and operated safely. We will look at some of the more complicated substation configurations that we see on the network. You will understand why we have configured the substations in this way and what benefits they provide to the electrical network. Every piece of primary plant at the substation has a unique number, so that there is no confusion when circuits are being operated and maintenance being done. In the next few modules, we will look at how these numbering schemes are developed and applied to some typical substation configurations. In part 4 of the protection course, we introduce the basic principles of interlocking. In the next few sections on this course, we apply these principles on some different substation configurations. You will learn how we use logic terminology to describe the interlocking and then use it on some typical substations. Many of the protection systems that we use on the transmission network use defined zones to work out where the fault is on the network and operate the correct circuit breakers to clear it from the system. We will look at how these protection zones are defined and how we position the current transformers correctly to define the zones that we require. Feeders are the most vulnerable part of the electrical network as they carry the power from the generators to the substations. Feeder protection therefore needs to be designed to be both quick and accurate so that any fault could be isolated from the network without affecting the customers connected to it. You will understand some of the basic principles of the most common feeder protection that we use, which is differential feeder protection. The other main type of feeder protection we use is impedance or distance protection. We will look at all of the basic principles of this critical protection. You will understand how impedance protection operates and how it can be configured to a particular feeder circuit.